Lexi's Lantern, Chapter 3, The Second Search Lexi and Malay met Lexi's mom and took a taxi to the mall. Motorcycles zipped around their taxi. Then, one motorcycle pulled over to the sidewalk. A girl hopped onto the seat behind the man driving it, and away they went. Oh no, cried Lexi. That girl rode away with a stranger. Malay laughed. No, that was a motorbike taxi. I ride them to school every day. Doesn't it scare you? Lexi asked. Oh, asked Lexi. They go so fast. Lexi imagined riding a motorcycle. Maybe it was fun, she thought. Look, Malay said, that big river is called Chao Phraya. Then, as they passed shops overflowing with flowers, she said, Look at all those pretty purple and white orchids. Ooh. They saw a small crowd of women sitting next to piles of banana leaves. Two women braided the leaves together into small bowls. The others decorated the bowls with orchids. Lexi was excited. There was so much to see. What are those women doing? Lexi asked. They're making lanterns for Loy Krathong, said Malay. Have you decided what you're going to wish for? Lexi thought of her wish to go home and eat chicken tortilla soup. She didn't want to say that. It didn't seem very nice. Instead, she said, I don't know yet. What are you going to wish for? And this looks like a beautiful illustration of the banana leaves that were braided into a bowl and filled inside are the purple and white orchids. So I wanted to get a better idea of what one of these bowls could look like. So first I wanted to see what was a banana leaf. So a banana leaf is actually a very large green leaf that's that's really thick. So here's a few different pictures and they look really large. You can see the texture right here. Then I wanted to see what would it look like? A bowl made from banana leaf. And here is some basket weaving, a, a folded banana leaf to make a bowl. And I'm assuming <clears throat> that this is kind of the style that it was showing in the picture of a braiding of the banana leaf. Look at that. And weaving it together to make a bowl. Very interesting. How to make easy banana leaf bowls. <clears throat> Back to our story. Malay said to go to the university. That was her wish, right? Lexi says, I don't know yet. What are you going to wish for? Malay said, to go to the university. Maybe I can even go to school in the United States and visit you. Lexi hoped Malay's wish would, would come true. So here's one mystery that some of you guys have been writing about and trying to figure out where is Lexi from? Because she was eating chicken tortilla soup and she used a Spanish word, abuela, to describe her grandmother. So Lexi is Spanish, but lives in the United States. After visiting almost every store in the mall, Lexi, her mom, and Malay went to the food court. There were so many foods Lexi had never seen. She saw desserts that looked like jellies or beans and ice cream cones shaped like fish. There was purple rice and all sorts of vegetables. As they walked by each restaurant, Malay translated the signs. This one has eggplant, water spinach, chicken, octopus. Octopus, cried Lexi. Malay, is that the mall that your dad took my dad to visit? I think so, said Malay. Lexi said, can we go ask the man selling the octopus if we saw the watch? Why don't you ask, said Malay. 
Lexi opened her mouth, but nothing came out. She couldn't even remember how to say hello, like Malay had taught her. Would you please, please ask him, Malay? I really want to find the watch. It reminds me of my grandfather. Malay went up to the man, put her hands together, and said, Sawatdi ka. Then Malay turned to Lexi. No, he didn't see the watch. Lexi sighed. <sighs> they would have to keep looking. And here is a really cool picture of the market that Lexi and Malay and, and her mother are at. And here is chapter four. Go ahead and pause the video to work on our chapter three assignment and save chapter four for on Thursday. I am going to continue reading chapter four, The Beautiful Temples. The Beautiful Temples. The next morning, they all went to the temple called Wat Fo. Lexi was so happy her dad could come with them. Lexi had seen many temples while riding in the taxi, but Wat Fo was special. It was made up of many fancy temples inside a big wall with large gold statues of the big-bellied, smiling Buddha. Some visitors lit incense and prayed in the temples. Others watched and took pictures. Monks in orange robes walked through the crowds and chatted with visitors. Cats of every color napped on steps, on benches, and in the garden areas sprinkled throughout the grounds. Wat Fo was so big that it took a long time for Lexi's dad to show them his favorite parts. When they reached the exit, Lexi's mom was so thirsty, they got in line to buy water. This is exactly where I was standing last week when a monk spoke to us all. Lexi's dad said. I asked if I could take his picture, but my phone battery was dead. Maybe another monk will come by, Lexi said. She looked around the crowd for a monk in an orange robe. Through the opening in the temple wall, she saw vendors selling food. That's when she saw it. One had a sign with a smiling purple octopus. Lexi gasped. <gasps> Another octopus! Maybe this was the one! Now, some of you might be wondering about a few different things, about a few different vocabulary words in this part of the story. What is a temple? So a temple is a place of worship. So they're usually very big and beautiful, and they, they look a little bit like a mosque or a church right? A very big, large building with beautiful domes on top. And like they said in the story, a lot of people come here to pray. The other vocabulary word that I wanted to talk about in the story is a monk. So right here it says in the temple that monks in orange robes walked through the crowds and chatted with visitors. So a monk is someone who lives or stays within the temple and talks to visitors and maybe prays with them. So just to kind of paint a better picture of where Lexi is with her family. Then in the temple with all of these um, cats, right, napping throughout the place, Lexi gasped, oh, another octopus. Maybe this was the one. The one what? What does she think she might find by the octopus? Let's read to find out. Daddy, look! Could this be the place where you dropped your watch? Lexi's father looked at the smiling octopus on the sign and then all around them at the sparkling temples and swirling crowd. It might be. Lexi clapped her hands in excitement. You should ask if they found it. Her father shook his head. There are so many people here. If I did drop my watch here, then it's long gone by now. Lexi walked over to a woman and said, Excuse me, 
Do you know if anyone found a watch here last week? The woman did not speak English, but turned to a temple guide standing nearby. How may we help you? The temple guide asked. Lexi suddenly surprised herself. She remembered how to say hello. Sawat di ka, she said. Can you please tell me if you found a watch here last week? The guide asked her to wait and then hurried away. Lexi's parents joined her. I didn't know you could speak Thai, her father said. Malay taught me how to say hello, said Lexi. You said it perfectly, her father said. Lexi beamed with pride. The temple guide came back with one of the monks. He asked, or excuse me, he said to Lexi, I heard you lost your watch here. No, sir. My father lost his watch last week. A silver watch with gold numbers. The monk pulled his hand from the folds of his robe. He was holding the watch. We wondered if anyone would come back for this. Thank you so much, she told the smiling monk. May we please take a picture with you? She asked. The monk nodded, and they all posed for a picture. And that is the end of chapter four. Look at there, Lexi with her selfie stick. How funny. We will continue with chapter five at the end of the week.